Um, thank you for joining us to our housing basics for um, the academic year of 23-24. My name is Rene Gonzalez. I will be your host for today. Um, I hope that everyone is having a great summer. I hope that you're out on vacation, enjoying the nice weather out here. If you're not from California, um, you'll enjoy the ni nice weather when you get here. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I do work for housing. I've been here for two years now. I am the eligibility coordinator. If you've received any emails about um, your application not being complete, or maybe that um, your consent form wasn't filled out due to you being under the age of 18, uh, I more than likely sent you that uh, that email. So I just want to welcome everyone to this, this webinar. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so on today's agenda, we're going to welcome everyone. We're going to go through our amenities, our office location and hours, some general information, and a Q&A at the very end. So just a little feedback or some housekeeping things. In today's presentation, we do have some representatives in the background, I actually have all of our housing staff um, checking the Q&A. So if for whatever reason during the presentation, you have a question that sparked up or um, that you want answered, you can just drop it in the Q&A. Someone will go ahead and answer it. Um, if there is a reoccurring question, I'll go ahead and answer that live. Um, so after the presentation as well, you'll have an opportunity to also uh, ask, them, ask us some questions. And then once we wrap up everything, we'll go ahead and send you the recording of this session as well as a PDF. It might take us about two to three days before we can get that out to you um, once we download and cut everything, but we'll go ahead and, and send that to you to your email that you registered with. So yeah, well, welcome to housing. We're super excited for you all to, to join us come August. Um, August is definitely right around the corner, so we're happy to have you all here. Um, just to iron out any details that, that you might um, may or may not already know at this point, I believe mostly everyone who's in this session has already completed an application. If you haven't already, that's totally fine. We are gonna go over some information that, that would be helpful for you. Um, but yeah, just sit sit tight and we'll go over that information for you. So studies show that living on campus increases the likelihood that students will achieve a higher rate of academic success. Um, living on student on campus, students can access leadership opportunities, build meaningful connections, live in a safe environment, enjoy fun events all year long, access to counseling quickly get to class, participate in on-campus events, and more. And I really just want to highlight the programming that we do here on campus. Um, as you can see here in our images, you can see the events that we've had in the past. Um, this last year, we did host about 300 plus events. So um, definitely an increase from last year. And I think our students had way more fun. Um, and then I just wanted to go over some important dates. Um, as you may or may not already know, the roommate wizard process does close today. Um, we will be closing it tonight at 11.59 p.m. So if you haven't already selected your roommate through the roommate wizard process, um, definitely do that by today. Um, hopefully we can get to any questions that you may have. <clears throat> the next important day will be the room selection or the and the room change process will end and that'll be on July 7th. Now this portion only applies to people that applied for the apartments. If you are not going to be 21 within the academic year, then you do not qualify to live in the apartments. Um, the next big deadline will be July 19. So if you're kind of up on the fence about housing and you don't know if you wanna cancel or um, you're maybe you might think you might cancel, you want to do it before the July 19 deadline. Anytime after that, you may incur a penalty. And just to avoid any of that, make sure you, you cancel by that deadline or if not before. Um, if for those of you that are under the age of 18 on move-in day, you are required to submit a medical consent form. I've sent you all an email this last Tuesday 
if you're under that uh, category. If you've already submitted it, we've gone ahead and um, processed your, your form. Um, if you have any questions about that, just send us an email and we can go ahead and check that for you. Um, the next deadline is going to be August 9th. For, so for those of you that haven't yet applied, um, definitely get your application in before this, de this date. Uh, once we hit this date, you may be placed on a wait list and we will not start doing new bookings until August 21st. So if you want to get your room by move, move in week and you're all settled in for the first day of classes, definitely submit your application by August 9th. And then the next big deadline after we're all settled in and everyone's moved in, it'll be our housing pay payment deadline for the semester. Um, that'll be September 8th and your housing payment will be due in full. We will be doing some payment plans and we will email you all all that information mid-July and we'll go ahead and, and share the process with you on how to submit that properly. But for now, just, just hold on until we send you that informative email and you'll know how to submit a payment plan request. All right, so we'll go into the amenities here or um, the way that our, our South Village is set up. Uh, what you can expect is for all your bedrooms to be furnished. Uh, all the floors in South Village have restrooms and showers. Every tower has a laundry room. Uh, the, all the utilities are included. Wi-Fi is included. Uh, we also have a TV and movie streaming service. Um, there are study and community lounges on every floor as well. We have the learning center, which is on the first floor. And you can, if you want a private space, you want to close that door and just study, you, you can do that in the learning center. Um, we also have the wellness zone, which is our gym. Um, yesterday, the, the USU shared with us that the wellness zone is actually um, incorporating some new items to make it uh, more enjoyable for students to want to hit the gym. Um, so definitely check that out when you move in. Um, Village Commons, so the dining hall, uh, that they are also having some renovations over the summer, so we're super excited to share that with you all. Um, the, the village, we have the village cafe, which is the convenience store. So if you want a snack, you know, after hours, um, you can go ahead and buy soda, chips, um, maybe something sweet. You can definitely do that there. And as mentioned earlier, we have the learning center. We have a mail room and themed communities. And this area is mainly catered for students who will not be 21 within, within the academic year. So if you're not going to be 21 within the academic year, you will be living in South Village. <clears throat> Next is our university apartments. And this includes everyone who will be living in phase one, phase two, as well as the Golden Eagle apartments. The Golden Eagle apartments are for our grad students. So uh, you do have to be in a specific category to, to be eligible for this. Um, but what you can expect is similar to South Village are the rooms are furnished. Um, however, in, in the apartments, there are kitchens in every apartment. Um, there are bathrooms, you, all the utilities are included. There is a laundry room in every building. Um, the Wi-Fi is also included. TV and TV and moving movie streaming services, uh, access to first floor amenities offered in South Village and themed communities. So regardless of where you live, if you live in South Village or the university apartments, you can totally take advantage of both areas as far as the amenities that are included. Um, you don't have to be a part of one community to be able to benefit from the other stuff. So we have a game room over in phase phase one. So if you wanna go over there, play ping pong or play it on our switch, you, you can go ahead and, and use it even if you live in South Village. Um, so again, the university apartments, um, these are for students who are going to be 21 in the academic year. So mainly our upperclassmen, and for the Golden Eagle Apartments, it's only for our graduate students. Oops, okay. 
All right, so our South Village amenities, we have study rooms, meditation rooms, a spin cycle room, community lounges, and more. And then in the apartments, we have we actually have a basketball court, a volleyball court, a game room, as I was mentioning earlier. Sometimes we do host some tournaments for like Super Smash Brothers. So if you want to be a part of that, definitely sign up. Um, we have a convenience store out there laundry rooms and housing. We have a food pantry. And then we'll go over our office locations and hours. So fun fact, here in housing, we have two, two housing offices. Our main office is going to be the South Village office. Um, if you can see there in the bottom right, and we're actually located in Tower Two, first floor. Um, this is mainly will your will you where you'll go if you're having like um, meal plan problems, if you're having payment plan problems, any problems altogether, you can come here and we can hash that out with you. Um, in Phase Two office, you can also ask general questions. However, they may not have. Um, all the resources is, all the resources to answer all questions. So you can definitely stop by there and they can go over with you the question being asked. And if if they can't answer it, um, you can come down to Southridge and we'll answer it for you. So for South Village, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, will be open. Phase two hours are from Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, as far as the mail rooms in South Village, the mail room will be open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we do open on Saturdays, but it's for a shorter period of time. And it'll be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Sundays, we are closed. Uh, phase two, very similar to that of South Village. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. will be open. And then also on Saturdays, we're open 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Again, Sundays are closed. Um, as mentioned here up top, um, hours are subject to change during our holidays and breaks. So let's say um, Christmas break due to short staff or um, maybe we're not receiving so many packages we might we might decrease the time of when you're able to pick up packages okay so if you're still unsure about um staying in housing here's a quick guide to our housing prices you can see here on the right hand side if you just want to take a screenshot of this page um but we want you to make sure that, that you're set up to cover your expense. So definitely review your financial aid and budget to ensure that you're gonna have the funds to pay um, the, best, the best payment plan. Um, if you're still not sure about how to cover housing, you can always call the financial aid office and they can provide you resources on how you can cover housing. Um, Another thing is if you have a health condition or disability that requires a housing accommodation, you need to register with OSD, the Office for Students with Disabilities for a housing recommendation. This includes requests for service or emotional support animals. Um, and then at the very end of the application, you will pay a $40 non-refundable fee. Um, so definitely get that in so that we can consider your application as complete. For the meal plans, here's a brief summary of what it looks like. Um, we'll kind of break it down here for you. So if we look here on the left-hand side for South Village, that's where you're, you'll normally see the all-access meal plans. The all-access meal plans, you can, you can eat all you care to eat. So for example, the all-access seven meal plan, it'll be seven days a week and all you care to eat. Um, then you'll see the $100 declining balance. So what this means is that on your one card, you're able to use this card at, at anywhere um, in the housing area. So let's say you want to go to um, the village market uh, or the village cafe. 
you can go there and you can buy a soda, you can buy chips. Um, definitely use it before the end of the semester because it does not carry over until the spring semester. Um, so definitely use it or lose it. Um, for the all access five meal plan, you, this will be uh, all you care to eat five days a week, Monday through Friday. And this will have a $50 declining balance. And then now we can shift over to the university apartments where they do have uh, block meal plans um, as well as the weekly five meal plan. Um, so we went through the all access meal plans. Now we'll go to weekly five here at the middle of this um, uh, column or rows. So weekly five plus was five meals per, per week, Monday through Friday. Um, so you can use these however you want. If you want to use three meal three meals on Monday and then two on Friday, you can totally do that. But it's only through Monday through Friday. Um, then we have the block meal plans. This is by um, by swipe. So you're you're buying swipes. You got the block two hundred, the block one fifty, and the block one hundred. Um, and th and th these you can use however you want. If you want to use most of them throughout the week, or if maybe some weeks you, you don't feel like using your swipes, um, at least you have that and you can kind of manage it how, how you like. If you want to take a screenshot of this page, it'll be definitely helpful. Okay, um, so we went through the dining dollars. So again, this is actual money that is put on your one card. And you can use this uh, at the Dining Commons, the Veg Cafe, or the Phase 2 Market. Uh, these dollars are limited to dining housing only. Again, it does not carry over to the next semester. So definitely use it before you go on your winter break um, because it will not carry over. If you have questions about how to check your balance as far as like your dining dollars or if maybe you're on a, a block plan you can check how many swipes you have uh, by going to this link we're going to share this uh, pdf with everyone here so um, if you want this link for later you're more than welcome to do that um, all right now we'll go over parking so students living on campus who wish to bring a vehicle must purchase a resident parking permit. Unfortunately, you cannot buy your permit until we've posted charges to your account. That's going to happen in mid-July. Um, and then we're going to put a code on your account that says you're a housing student. So once we do that, that's when you'll be able to buy your resident parking permit. So for now, just hang tight. Come mid-July, you'll be able to see, see that resident parking permit. Um, we did look up the rates for this year, and if you can see on the right-hand side, um, per parking, these are going to be the rates. So currently for the summer is 165 for our residents, and the fall it'll be 264. Um, so for the parking permits, you can only use it on lot five or along the street of Pasel Rancho Castilla of Marion Del Avenue to the Hellman Bridge. Um, you can only park in those areas which are considered the housing areas. If you want to take your car across campus to another parking structure, you will have to buy a daily, daily permit or another type of permit um, due to you having a resident permit. So it, it doesn't um, qualify for those other areas. Um, there are some 30 day permits if you would prefer to do that option. And those can range uh, from $66 per the 30 day period. Um, question about where to locate the parking, um, the parking permit page, that's going to be on your get and on those boxes on the left hand side, you'll be able to see a box that says purchase parking um, and you'll be able to access that then. But again, you can't buy the resident permit parking until sometime mid July, okay? So for those of you that are still new and haven't yet applied, if you want your opportunity to apply, you would go to our webpage and you want to select housing portal and you'll see that on the gray bar of our main webpage. Um, if you want, if you want to do that now, you can go ahead and follow this QR code and it'll take you to our, our website directly. 
And if you want to begin applying today, you can do that. Uh, one important thing, some students forget that they have to select the student SSO login. Um, we do receive a lot of questions about students inputting their username and password that they created, um, but this is the incorrect way to log in. So you have to do it using the CSULA student SSO feature. Um, and this, what this does is it links your account to the campus account. That way everything merges over. If you use your personal username or password, you're not going to see the housing application. Okay, and once you're logged into the housing portal, at the very top, you're going to see housing application 2324, and you can get uh, started with your application today. All right, so now we're just imagining that you are now in room. We did move in day, um, you're all settled in. And now you notice that all your outlets aren't working or maybe the lights up top are not working. So what you wanna do is you wanna submit a work order. In order to do that, you wanna log into your housing portal. Your portal is going to be linked to your bedroom. So um, once you go there, you wanna click the, the maintenance tab at the top. It'll say submit a work order. You're gonna choose the category and items. So let's say um, the outlets are, are broken. You might select room, your bedroom, and then um, select that your outlets are broken. Um, if you're okay with us resolving the issue when you're not home, you, you must check that box. That way you're allowing us um, consent for us to go inside your bedroom um, and go ahead and fix that while you're not there. Um, and if if you're not comfortable with us going in when you're not there, you can request a time and day that you would like our staff to go in and we will try to accommodate your request. Um, so then you'll go ahead and click save and continue. You're going to submit the work order. And then um, if you have multiple issues inside your room, let's say move in day, you wanna create separate work orders. Um, so I, I did say earlier, if your outlets are out and also your lights are up top, those are going to be two separate work orders and we definitely wanna log those in separately. Cancellation policies. So remember that everyone that's applied for housing is signing in a contract. So this is very similar to signing a lease off campus. Um, it's very similar to that. So just want to remind you all that you are signing a contract. We want you all to read it very thoroughly, given that this is a legally binding agreement. Um, so re read through it. This is a legal binding agreement. It can only be voided under certain, uh, special circumstances after July 19. So right now we're still not at the deadline of July 19. If you're pretty certain that you want to cancel, you can go ahead and do that today, but yeah, just make sure you do it before the deadline. Um, again, after that deadline, approved cancellations are not guaranteed and it'll be on a case by case basis. And it can take us up to seven to 14 business days for us to process. So just keep that in mind. Some students will submit a cancellation. Hey, I submitted my cancellation yesterday. Um, I wanna break the contract, but now they're in room and it's, it takes a while for us to process something like that. So um, cancellations do need to be approved. Your contract is still going to be active unless you're confirmed um, or otherwise told by housing. Sometimes students will turn in their keys, they'll leave their room, they'll go back home to Oakland or wherever they're from. And they say, well, I, I never lived here. Um, yeah, I so therefore I shouldn't be charged if I was never living here, but if we never knew, then um, we would still consider you as still living here. So <clears throat> definitely submit a, a cancellation. Um, if we are past the July 19th, it would be a petition to cancel, and then we'll go ahead and review it and uh, go over the circumstances. So the four main reasons for for a cancellation to be approved with supporting documentation. Um, so for one, if you're no longer going to Cal State LA, um, or this includes like graduation, or you decided you're not taking classes, um, failing to meet the minimum unit requirement, this will allow you to 
potentially break your contract. Uh, another one is marriage that occurs after the start of the agreement. Uh, military service licensee must report for duty. <clears throat> Extreme hardship, which is compelling and an unanticipated medical or financial problems beyond licensee licensees control arising after the date of execution of their license agreement. So please go through the contract and make sure that you qualify for this reason. So lockouts. So let's say it's 1 a.m. and you forget your key in your bedroom. It's, it might happen, hopefully it doesn't, but in the event that it does, there is a way to, to get help, okay? So if you're in South Village, um, you're going, if this is during business hours, you're going to head to the main office and you're gonna let the front desk know that you're locked out. Um, we're gonna provide you with a temporary key for 15 minutes. Um, we do only provide three courtesy key lockouts. So you get three, three free lockouts. After that, we will charge you depending on how many lockouts you have there on after. Um, if you do have too many lockouts, this may impact your eligibility to live on campus. So hopefully, you know, you don't get locked out too many times. If, if you do get locked out one, two, three times, you know, it's fine. But after that, just be conscious that you may be charged for those reasons. Okay, so in the apartments, the same rules apply, like in that of South Village, um, except you will go to the housing office in phase two, and here we will provide you a temporary key. Um, it's a little bit more difficult in the apartments because it is hard keys. Um, so just, just be mindful of that. And again, same like South Village, you're only allowed three courtesy key lockouts. So back to what I was going early, going to earlier, um, let's say it's 1 a.m. and you're locked out. Um, you don't know what to do. Can't get back, get back in your room. Okay, this is where the RAs play a very vital role. Uh, so you're going to contact your resident assistant or the RA on duty um, if you're locked out after hours. The RAs are only available after offices are closed. So your RE on duty information uh, will be different for each community and you'll learn the correct phone number for your community when you move in as signage will be posted around each area. So you'll see all this information posted on every tower depending on where you're living. Um, if you wanna take a screenshot now, the numbers at the bottom will, will pertain to the, the tower that you're in. Um, right now, you do not know your your assignment, and you won't learn this until a move-in day. But if you want this just for a quick reference in the future, um, hopefully you don't get locked out on your first day. But if it does happen, um, don't worry, we're here to help. All right, some frequently asked questions. So my favorite one, can I bring my pet eagle? No animals other than fish are allowed in the residence halls and apartments. Um, the most you're allowed is a 10 gallon tank for your fish. Um, but yes, only fish are allowed. Um, if you have, if you're a student and, has, and you have a disability um, and you have approval and you're seeking approval for a service animal or assisted animals, you, you must contact the Office for Students with Disabilities. Um, you'll see this posted now. It'll be calcellate.edu forward slash OSD. And the number is 323-343-3140. Um, common question, singles, single rooms. Can I have a single room? Single rooms are currently not being offered to any students unless you're a graduate student. Um, if you're a graduate student, you do have the ability to choose single rooms within the room selection process. Um, if you have questions about how to do that, please reach out to us, um, given that the deadline to select your own room is coming. Um, I'm a transfer student. Where would I live? So again, all students under the under 21 and will not be 21 within the academic year are required to live in South Village. Students are students over 21 or will be 21 within the academic year will live in phase one and two apartments. Um, 
and again, if you're if you're a grad student, you would have the ability to live in GA, which is the Golden Eagle Apartments. What if I want to live with people I know? So um, today again is the deadline for our roommate wizard. If you want the opportunity to pick somebody that you already know, or maybe you connected with over the summer and you're both coming to Castellet, uh, definitely pick each other within the roommate wizard as it does close today. Um, and there you can select your preferred roommate. If you have maybe, um, let's say you prefer to stay up at 3 a.m. and study, you can filter by all the students that would prefer to, to study later hours, and then you can decide to pick them and hopefully you two can be friends. Um, so be sure you have each other's CIN and full names. The person you choose must be eligible to live in the same community as you. Um, Yes, so both students must be must complete an application. If both students do not have a complete application, um, make sure you, you complete that before you're able to see each other in the roommate wizard. So some upcoming info sessions, we're gonna have the all things financial. Um, this info session is going to cover all things financial when it comes to living on campus. We'll walk you through what our process is and the timeline for posting charges. Um, our partners here on campus, the One Stop Office and the Financial Aid Office are going to join us so they can answer your questions. Um, this is a hot topic for us, so definitely uh, mark your calendar if you want to join us for this session. Um, and then later down the road, uh, two weeks before move-in, we're going to have our move-in information webinar. Uh, so if you have some questions about move-in, this info session is going to be for you. We will walk you through everything you need to know about in order to be moving ready. And both parents and students are welcome to attend this event. All right, so that concludes our webinar today. Um, please drop us questions in the Q&A and we'll go ahead and answer them. I'll actually be monitoring it now and see if there are any reoccurring questions. Um, let's see here. So one person asked, can we get the recording for today's session? Yes, you may get the recording for today's session. Um, however, it might take us about two to three business days before we'll send that out and we'll send it to that of your the email that you register, registered with. One student asked, is it possible to move in earlier? Um, so our move-in dates are going to be August 17, 18, and 19. Um, on August 16th, our grad students do move in, but that is a very special date. If you if you already know your move-in day, um, we will have an early request move-in. Um, it may not, it, it'll depend on when you, you would prefer to move in, but we may be flexible. If um, we'll put out a form sometime in mid-July, um, so you can put in your request. We'll go ahead and remove, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go over your request. If you do get approved, there is a possibility that you'll you'll be charged a daily rate depending on when your contract starts. So just be aware of that. Um, we'll go ahead and put out that form sometime in mid-July. All right, Ruby, um, what do I need to do in order to, oops, I lost it. What do I need to do in order to make sure that I'm staying for only one semester? So technically our contracts are for the entire academic year. However, if you're going to be an international student here and your program says that you're only here for one semester, or if you're graduating at the end of the fall, um, we we will need that we would need you for you to uh, submit a cancellation 30 days before the end of the semester. So be sure you you submit that. Okay, if you're having trouble with the roommate wizard, let's say you keep reaching out to people and they're not um, responding to you, they're not accepting your group invite, um, don't worry, uh, we'll definitely find your, your best new friend for you. Um, we have a very good process on locating people that are, are as compatible to you as possible. Sure, nothing's perfect, but we can get pretty close as to somebody that is like-minded like you, and we'll find a roommate for you. Uh, one student asked, can I change my meal plan at any time? So after July 19, you will only be able to increase your meal plan. 
we do have a meal plan change form, but after July 19, you will not be able to decrease your meal plan, only increase it. Uh, one student asked, um, do we need to stay in our room um, during all hours? And the question is no. Um, Cal State LA actually has a open university campus, open housing area. So if you if you just want to walk out, you know, go out to grab a bite, 12 a.m. is totally fine. We're not going to be monitoring you like that. It is an open university and there are no curfews. Uh, one student asked, are there security supervisors, the dorms, especially co-ed floors? Um, so we don't necessarily have security on the floors. However, you do have your RAs that you can rely on um, and you can ask them questions about anything in particular. Um, we do have 24 seven police on campus. So if you're really in danger and your life's in danger, or you just don't feel comfortable in some way, you can call public safety um, and, and you can tell them your concern. Um, so there's definitely that resource. Are there any restaurants you guys would recommend near campus or you do, do you recommend staying on campus? Um, there, to be honest, there's not too many restaurants around campus. You would have to drive out maybe 10 minutes to, to find something good. Um, but definitely check maybe Yelp or Google, Google and you can see all the highest rated uh, restaurants. Um, one student asked if we, if our roommate chose different housing communities, would we still be able to be in the same communities we chose? Um, so that that becomes a little bit difficult because now you're asking two different questions. Do you want to prioritize your your community, or do you want to prioritize your roommate? So this is so for us, we like to prioritize roommates. However, if you would prefer not to to be with your preferred roommate and would prefer your community, definitely make that known in the application. Um, in this case, I would not, I would say do not do the, the roommate wizard if you would rather be placed in, in the community that you would like to be in. Unless um, both you and the person you want to live with are in the same community, then that, that would be different. But um, yeah, that's two different questions there. Is there any security monitoring all the entrances at the housing residence halls um, to ensure that students are only going in. Uh, so we don't have security like that. Um, however, to get inside inside every tower, you do need your campus ID. So um, we program all the keys on your campus ID. <clears throat> if there are other students that don't have um, the housing key on their card, they're not gonna be able to tap in. So somebody that is foreign to this area will not be able to get inside the towers. Uh, the, what do the housing communities offer? So what the communities offer you is a space to be with like-minded individuals. So let's say you're gonna study business. We're going to place you with all the other business students. And that way, when maybe you're having the same classes or you wanna collaborate on a project, maybe you wanna start a business, um, that would be the perfect opportunity to meet other business students. Um, there are so there are multiple communities just like that, um, and it'll just depend on which community you would be want to be a part of. Can friends stay overnight with me for a day? So if you want somebody to stay over over with you for a night, you do have to submit a guest form, and that'll be found in the housing portal. Um, it would have to be approved by one of our staff members, but and you would have to submit a form. So if you have somebody coming over for a night, um, just be sure to send us that form and we'll go ahead and review it. Uh, give us some time. Don't just give us like one day and then you want us to, to review it right away. So yeah, definitely give us some time. For those of you that are coming from out of uh, the area, maybe out of state, what are the uh, what are the types of transportation I can take from the airport to the dorms on move-in day? Um, I would definitely suggest doing uh, Uber or maybe a taxi, or if you have a friend that can pick you up, that would be great. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a direct bus or anything like that that'll take you to campus. So you might have to do some research in advance to to get to campus, um, maybe uh, research our parking and transportation um, website. And you can see on 
you know, what what amenities are available to you as a student. I know they do provide some discounts when it comes to public transportation. Um, so check out public and transportation. It, it, yeah, it's a, it's a department on campus. So what if our car and properties are vandalized? What would the campus do about it? Um, so this question, you would need to refer to campus police. Uh, as far as vandalism, this seems to me like a police report. Um, so reach out to them. They'll do a report for you and they can let you know on the next steps. Does the one card cover expenses for going to restaurants on campus? Unfortunately, the one card does not do that with the dining dollars. You can, however, um, load your card for like, let's say printing on campus. Um, but the dining dollars and the Eagle dollars are, are separate. So um, yeah, dining is going to be, for, dining dollars are gonna be for all of housing. If you have Eagle dollars and that'll be for, for that of on campus. How many people can I bring to help me with move in? Also, will we have the rolling bins to put our things in? Um, normally we recommend one to two people for to help you with move in. Um, we will be providing rolly, rolling bins and staff members will be able to help you locate your bedroom. Um, as we get closer to move-in day, we are going to release a pretty hefty email with all the information you need to know about move-in day. Um, we're going to tell you how to where to go, um, where to um, where to go, how to check in, and then we'll give you information there on what to do next and how to access one of those rolling bins. So, what about the meal plan? Is the price shown online is for one semester or for the full academic year? So what you see on our website is going to be for the entire academic year. Um, if, but however, when you do get charged in July, you're only going to be charged for half of the meal plan. So sure, you're you're committing to the full academic year cost, but we only charge you per semester um, when it, we when it comes to posting charges. If I'm uncomfortable with my roommate. Um, is it possible to, to change rooms and how quickly does that happen? Okay, that is, um, that's a tough one. Um, so you, you can, so there is gonna be a room change process that will take place. Uh, normally it takes place three weeks after move in. So let's say you and your roommate, you're just not getting along. He likes blue and you like purple and you just, yeah, you, you all don't get along. That's fine. Um, you can go ahead and submit a room change request and then your RA or maybe your RLC is going to review what you've what you've written and why you want to change. If you do get approved for a room change, it'll be a $75 fee. Um, and then we'll let you know on the next steps. Um, it's not very easy to make a, a room change. It does take us some time to, to prep a room and then make sure everything is room and uh, move in ready. Um, so I would say after that, that room change process does happen, it could take approximately two to three weeks for, for that to happen. It depends also on the circumstance. If you're interested in a tour on campus uh, here in housing, you can request one by sending us an email. Um, you can send us an email to askhousing at calcidelay.edu and we'll be more than happy to show you, show you a tour. Okay, so we'll go ahead and conclude this session. Um, we will be posting this video on our webpage and we'll also be emailing everybody a PDF and a video of this um, session. So in case you missed something for whatever reason, you can go back and review it. Um, again, we are gonna host some other sessions in the future. So if something just wasn't clear or um, you want more information, you can join those sessions or you can just uh, give us a call or send us an email. We'll, we'll be more than happy to talk to you and, and hammer out those details. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, and we're, we're happy to see you on move-in day. Enjoy your summer and we'll see you soon.